Hello, fellow Mega Tennists. Welcome to another episode of the Mega Ten Minute. Now, today we're going to be talking about something that's really, really simple, just a little, bit of baby little thing. We're going to be talking about the Shin Megami Tensei 4 art. And you might be asking yourself, why do you have to talk about this? Well, I've already seen the art. And the reason why is because not everyone who follows me is well versed in the history of Mega Ten. And they might not know that there's a little more to SMT4's art than, let's say, Nocturne's art. And what I mean by that is that there's more than one artist involved, really. And I want to discuss that in this video. So there's like seven artists involved with Shin Megami Tensei 4, a little more. There's Kazuma Kaneko, he's the one that did all the demon designs of the old days of yore. We have Masayuki Doi, he's the one that did all the character designs. And we have the guest artists. People who are involved heavily in the tokusatsu stuff, usually character design or creature design for tokusatsu. Tokusatsu is essentially where Power Rangers comes from. So if you ever liked Power Rangers, it's just a westernized tokusatsu. So the guest artists are as follows. Yoshihiro Nishimura, he's a film director and special effects artist. Yasushi Narasawa, he's a modeler and illustrator. Tamotsu Shinohara, character and creature designer. Aki Kyoma, he's a mangaka. And Keita Amamiya, a character designer and creature designer. So who are these five men and what did they do? First we got Tamatsu Shinohara, he was the sole designer on Kosoku Sentai Turbo Ranger, Juken Sentai Gika Ranger, Samurai Sentai Shinkanger, and Risha Sentai Tokuger. He also designed for the Heisei Kamen Rider. For Shin Megami Tensei 4, he kind of designed a lot. He designed Chemtrail, Nepea, Dullahan, Anat, Ancient of Days, Koga Saburo, and Tenkai. Oh, and Minotaur, Minotaur 2. According to Shinohara, he was emailed about designing for the game with deadlines and everything. And he said he probably wouldn't have accepted it if he knew it was for a video game, as he didn't really play video games. And he didn't know anything about Mega Ten. But he was a huge fan of Kaneko, stating he had all of Kaneko's art books. Regarding his designs, he said that they were built around emulating the origins while adding his own new interpretations and ideas. And he, like the other artists, didn't actually have to use research as the basis for their art. Instead, they usually relied on either keywords or sending drafts to Atlas for feedback. For Minotaur, he knew the demon appeared in previous Mega Ten games, and he wanted to make something special. He took the concept of the Nin Nin Bowery, a two-person comedic act where they share a coat, often with one being the face and the other being the hands. The idea of working the human face into the bull face is something that he said he's very familiar with, so it came easily to him. He decided to try and make his bull portion stand out by making the human face a skull. And instead of blending the human and bull characteristics for the body, he decided it would be the human form wearing the bull form like a coat. This process was wrought with the thought, this isn't Megaten enough, which dictated his design process. And I gotta tell this little story really quick about his son. So his son is like an elementary school kid and he allowed him to play Shin Megami Tensei 4. Now, while playing this game, he found it very engaging and whatever, but he got stuck where a lot of people get stuck. He got stuck fighting Minotaur, and the frustration of this fight actually made his little kid cry. I think that's pretty funny. I thought it was worth mentioning. Another funny story is that his son actually made his own little demonary or demonology book or whatever you want to call it, where he would draw demons from Shin Megami Tensei 4. And he noticed that his son didn't draw any of his demon designs. So when he asked his son, hey, why didn't you draw any of my demons? His son, <laughs> his son basically just says, your designs are too messy. And I think that that's pretty messed up to get burned by your son that way. For Nepea, Shinohara was given text materials describing a fairy of the valley, a young woman. So he thought of a poem called 
a dryad in the spirit of the valley. And that spawned the idea of a disgusting yet beautiful person. Because he only had a couple of words to work with, he started with this weird disgusting angle with pus. But he moved away from that over time. He also tried to make her look flirtatious because it's not something he would normally draw. For Dullahan, he kept the armor and helmet motif. The struggle was keeping Dullahan feminine. She went through a god of death sort of design and a witchy sort of design. He kept going back to the idea that for Kaneko's art, it's not about what's there, but what's not there. So with Shinohara's design, he tried to approach the character with the idea that once he had the whole idea down, he shouldn't add to it. This then kind of formed the idea of a bisque doll. So sort of like a ball joint doll. And that kind of sparked a toy aesthetic for the character, wanting to create something that looked a little bit like a cheap action figure. And that became the overall concept. For Koga Saburo, the classical Japanese figure was something Shinohara was very familiar with. Initially, there was a desire to make a snake motif, as that's something to use, but this would transform into twisting abstract shapes instead. And the story of his arms being ripped off by Taka Mikizuchi inspired the idea of his arms floating at his sides. The lack of a face came from his indecision on what to do with the face design, leading him to believe that the faceless visage was a better choice. Tenkai was the first demon that Shinohara designed. The armored pieces and texture that make up Tenkai were initially meant to be stone or wood, but because he worried about the graphical fidelity of a 3DS, Shinohara opted to simplify it, worried that it wouldn't be discernible in-game. The texture lines he created instead were meant to be a visual representation of the hardness of the character, with the image being of a monk who had turned into a stone statue over the years. The name of the demon specifically comes from Nankobo Tenkai, and a few stories say that he's actually Mitsuhide Akechi, which is why Tenkai's design hides his face. The cat ears looking thing is actually supposed to be horns, and that's supposed to indicate that he became an ogre because of his fixations. And the reason why the whole Masahide Akechi thing is kind of relevant is because that character is someone who is accredited with the assassination of Masakado. Masakado was a real person, yeah. Chemtrail was a completely original creation, so Shinohara enjoyed this experience since there is no template for the design. The only real design parameters being that he had to approach it from the lenses of what would this demon look like in Megami Tensei. The original design was actually an old man spewing smoke from his head while running. Then there was this whole idea of implementing new world order concepts such as a pyramid with an eyeball on his stomach, but that was quickly abandoned and the design was moved to CG as Shinohara wanted to experiment with 3D. For Ancient of Days, the keyword Shinohara worked off of was UFO and the Tank of God. This took about six tries, with the Orphanum Angels being inspiration. Though after seeing Amamiya's Raphael design, Shinohara took to redesigning yet again to make his ancient look reminiscent of the angel design. The demon ended up being somewhat inspired by chandeliers and since the Orphanum Angels have four out of the key number, Shinohara tried to use that number as much as he could in the design. He wanted to create something that felt otherworldly and reminiscent of UFOs. Sanat was meant to contrast the Ancient of Days, which is why it's asymmetrical, grounded instead of flying, and ugly instead of... <laughs> less ugly. <laughs> The initial influence was the Thousand-Armed Goddess of Mercy, a deity that I couldn't find exactly besides like Guan Yin, but that design idea proved to be pretty difficult, so Sanat was designed with a hundred arms in mind instead. Sanat is a sage from Hindu mythology and because of the religious significance, Shinohara did not want to do a faithful depiction necessarily because he thought that would be a little disrespectful to the character. as. In the game, Sanat is an enemy character. So next we have Nirasawa. Nirasawa would be responsible for a lot of the demons that would be kind of contentious designs later on. Yasushi Nirasawa is pretty famous for his work in Kamen Rider Blade, uh, Kabuto, and Denno. First, let's talk Centaur. The idea of this design was to avoid the traditional depiction and try to do a different combination of half man and half horse instead, with the halves of the torso being two unicorns. For Medusa, Nirasawa wanted to give her a punk rock makeover, and the skulls are supposed to be the skulls of her fallen prey. Asmodeus, according to Nirasawa, is meant to embody majesty and strength, 
and he drew upon a lot of different materials. His body is meant to be covered with skulls of red demons and rings and keys because that's also supposed to be a part of his character, the act of avarice or greed. Michizane is a suit of armor made of bones. The idea was to have organic energy. This energy became electricity in the final product. Now we have Lucifer. Lucifer is meant to look high class and stylish. That's why he wears a pearl leather suit to give him a sublime appearance. He also opted to elongate the limbs and give one arm an egg. In Lucifer's second form, Narasawa got asked by Atlas to make his egg arm look like it had been fused with Walter. Atlas asked for him to include Walter's spiky hair and a scarf or so in the design. Which he did quite faithfully because this is nearly a one-to-one -one with Walter's in-game art. Lastly, Narasawa contributed the new Masakado design. Because the scale of Masakado is important, he focused on giving off the indication that he was quite large. So you see in the design, there's waterfalls, mountains, cities, and etc. Next, we have Aki Kiyoma. Aki Kiyoma has a very interesting relationship. He's already been working with Alice before. He worked on the shadow designs in Persona 4, and the way he kind of worked with Atlas wasn't with the keywords necessarily. It was kind of the keywords and submitting the designs for approval. And then he would create these 3D models and kind of like decorate them. Quibico's keywords are earth and vegetation. Since Quibico is the god of fields and agriculture, his right arm is made of cracked mud and his left is sand. His torso is made of rocks and a rice plant is bound to his head. He's meant to represent a bit of a scarecrow, but it's abstracted a bit so it doesn't fit that American B-movie motif. Instead, Kyoma says, it's more like a scarecrow on steroids. For Yamato Takeru, he received the name, angular hair, Magatama jewels, ancient Japan, cracked earthenware, and transform. Kyoma wanted to make a dark hero of sorts, with the idea that he could slot the Magatama into his Kusanagi no Surugi to pull off special moves. If the jewels were in his chest on the left side, he's an enemy. And if it's on his right side, he's an ally. And if it's on both sides, he's supposed to turn gold and enter a hyper mode. Kenji, King of Tokyo, challenged Kiyoma to use the words face, destruction, revival, and emphasized red lines. He tried to make the demon look different enough to the rest of the designs, but he said it instead ended up resembling a character from a Sentai series. I can't figure out who he's talking about. Can you? His last design was Astaroth. Astaroth's keywords are androgynous man, top breast villain in a transforming hero movie, medieval nobleman, and figure. And this set of keywords presented a challenge to Kiyomo as he was not sure how to accomplish these complicated set of phrases. For androgynous, he used purple lipstick and a mask, and a dragon mouth was designed for the armor. Next up is Yoshihiro Nishimura. Now, this guy is kind of called the Tom Savini of Japan. If you don't know who Tom Savini is, Tom Savini is this guy who's really well known for his makeup work. He's done makeup for amazing movies like Creepshow and horrible movies like Django Unchained. Nishimura is also a film director with his most notable work for me being Tokyo Guard Police. Nishimura said this project surprised him and he wasn't sure when he was offered it. Though he clarifies that the people in charge begged him to do it because they are fans of his work and the work of Noboru Iguchi who was another Japanese film director who made an interesting adaption of Cat-Eyed Boy. And amazingly, that whole movie is on YouTube. Nishimura's art is typically sculpture work. Amazingly, this is what he did for the game, and it works. However, the final product that we see in-game was done by someone else in-house at Atlas, and they faithfully adapted Nishimura's work with some variants, as seen here with Yaso Mayatsuhi. Nishimura was happy with the final product featured in the game, as the photo looked very, very dimensional. His design approach was observing the source material and considering what that source material would have been like if his grandmother told him that story as a bedtime story and consolidating those two ideas. 
For Omoikane, Nishimura says he understood that Omoikane is an intellectual and meant to be a smart boy. This created this image in his mind of a creature made of cranial nerves holding generations upon generations worth of scrolls. This was actually Nishimura's favorite contribution and apparently building that wiry body was very difficult to do. Nishimura grew up consuming the works of Osamu Tezuka and the name Pluto sparked the memory of the Ashibori character of the same name. This shows in a few ways. The design is meant to be a poison spewing nuclear reactor fused with an organic being. Some of the ornateness is reminiscent of the head of Tezuka's character. The other facet of the design is the idea that it's merely Pluto's head and the rest of the body is beneath the ground. He also designed the Pluto soldier, but he doesn't say anything about it. Nishimura's last design is Yasuo Magatsuhi. This is interesting. The idea for Yasuo was that it was going to be a giant. This ended up being a demon that used to be a giant. That thing he's holding is a Kago, an old Edo period carrying device for people. Because Nishimura wanted Yasuo to look funny, he went for an absurd ugly aesthetic that would still be a little scary. The next person we have, or the final person we have rather, in terms of the guests, is Keita Amamiya. Keita Amamiya is very interesting because they're another prolific tokusatsu artist. They are a director as well. They're famous for their series Garo, which they started, and according to Kenny Lauderdale, it was originally a golden bat adaption that kind of turned into its own thing over time. And yeah, so this guy is someone who I found to be most interesting. They stay the least in their part. See, each part of this had a little bit of a section from the artist describing their methods, describing how they were invited to the project, and going over each design of each demon. He, however, just submits three short paragraphs, as opposed to the like seven or so that everyone else contributed. First, Amamiya was apprehensive because he was worried his style would not mesh well with the franchise's style. Though he joined after it became clear that many other artists would also collaborate, and they were mostly people he had worked with before in his career. Amamiya had also expressed that he loved Kaneko's character design work. He said he would draw many roughs to try and design a beautiful work as well. He would submit the drafts to Atlas, who would help him progress by choosing ideas they liked and weeding out the ideas they didn't like. A major design component of his pieces was the idea of machines, weapons, and man-made things that could be composited with traditional gods and demons to form new ideas and concepts. For his designs, he tried to create organic looking machinery, working into faces, torsos, and arms. For the four archangels, the colors are subtly different. And that's literally all he says about the design work. I just cannot believe that someone who's that influential or whatever would say so little about the stuff they did. I don't know what that means for anything, but it's just kind of bizarre because his work is kind of what I would consider more of an anomaly than the other works in this guest series experiment. So I would have wanted to hear him talk about it the most, and yet he doesn't really do that. However, if you're interested in learning more about the angels in SMT4, my acquaintance Kid Capes, aka Glib from the Hello Fellow Mega Tennis podcast, has a whole entire video discussing all about the angels and what they mean. So I would definitely recommend watching that video. It's linked in the description, so go ahead and check it out. But ho ho, we're not done yet. Lastly, we have the concept art itself. There's two artists who did the concept art according to the art book, who designed the locales for Mikado and the stuff for Below the Firmament. The Mikado stuff is mostly Eiji Ishida's art. He provides commentary for the Mikado pieces and basically a lot of the other pieces, bringing up how much he had to consult with Kaneko a lot. And the other artist is Toshihiro Takeuchi. This artist designed some of the other locales, though there's some crossover, so the way the book is set up, the locale is highlighted, and then all the designs relating to that place is on those pages related to that place. The fun would be trying to figure out who did what by simply glancing and comparing their bodies of work. I know of a few that could be contributed to one or the other because Toshihiro posted many of the arts, if not all of his artistic contributions, on their Pixiv and Tumblr. They were chosen by Atlas to work on the project, which was also their first video game project. We get a little bit of their professional backstory. Apparently they used to be a manager for a game company, then they quit to study art in America, 
and then they moved back to Japan. And that's it for this video. Uh, I know that it was a bit much. I probably could have done this a lot simpler, but hey, I like details. Details, details, details. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye, fellow Megatennists.